Hi folks, Gary Van Warmerdam from the Self Master community here and sharing a little bit about the cleanse for Lent. Some of you are having those uncomfortable reactions, oh no, oh no. And some parts are going, yeah, 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 that would be good, that would be good, yeah, that would be good, but oh no. So the journey begins. So the journey begins and you get to see how your mind reacts. Expectations, pressures, fear of failing. Things it just makes up because you have this idea of doing something different. Usually fear. Usually fear. Fear of losing something comfortable, losing something that's been an emotional crutch. Alcohol is an emotional crutch. Food's often an emotional crutch. Really good way for us to not be present and distract ourselves. Internet, Facebook, news, fa social media. Great ways to detach from really being present with what you feel and put ourselves in this virtual world of other people's stories on the news. Instead of controlling our attention, the scrolling of whatever is the next story is, we're going to read that, we're going to read that, we're going to read next, even if it's not anything we want, something gravitates our attention there. This is what I noticed in my process. I like, I don't like it, particularly reading, a, listening to the audible book by Matt Tiabi had something to do it, with it, um, about how the news works, what it's doing. His, his book is called Hate. Uh, I thought it was a really self-reflective as a reporter about the, himself and the industry. So that's part of my detox, uh, digital detox. So I'm trying to formulate out exactly what that is. I think it's, I don't even want to look at my, anything on my phone before noon. Although I may, for work, be checking emails. So I haven't exactly figured that out. Uh, but that's what I want to do. But we're giving things up. Lent is about giving things up, right? Or is it? Let's take two halves of that. Are we giving things up? Or are we getting things? Because how you frame the story here, how you set your intent makes a big difference. You see, I've got something I'm giving up. This is one of my favorite desserts. It's called semla. A friend of mine described it as an orgasm for the mouth. It's this beautiful pastry with cream. And then there's almond paste, which is a marzipan, butter, sugar, almonds together, layer. So good. Oh. They actually had these on Tuesday before Lent. Lent starts on Ash Wednesday, and so there's a celebration of Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday is the carnival in Mardi Gras in New Orleans and Rio de Janeiro Carnival. It's the big celebration before you go into this religious 40 days of fasting. And so it's a party, and in Sweden they would have this semla treat on Fat Tuesday. And then there were problems where they kind of said, you know, the church is corrupt and this is like the 1500s and they had the Reformation and uh, people said, no, we don't want to go with the Protestant church. They created all these different products or excuse me, didn't want to go with Catholic church, go with the Protestant church churches. And they were much less about the fasting and giving things up and that. And they were, then they had semblance every week. They had it on every Tuesday. And now you can get them here you know, every day of the week, you know, for like January 1st or something like that, all the way till the end of Lent. So am I giving this up? So the point is, the story about what Lent is about and the process has really changed a lot. It goes back to 2000 years ago with Christ and he wasn't giving up sinless, I'll tell you that. Um, I'm giving them up. I can't believe I'm doing that. What am I, crazy? What am I, stupid? This is nuts, right? 
if you've had one, you'd agree. Kind of the last one here tonight on celebrating Fat Tuesday. And then I'm not going to do it for about six and a half weeks. Why? Why would I just give up and just have a loss? Because as we let stuff go, we make a space for something else. What do I intend to gain? What do I intend to have that takes up the space that otherwise occupied my attention with news feeds and sweet treats? What do I gain that I can now do with my attention and my will when it isn't hypnotized by chasing treats and the next news article and more information and some pundit's opinion? What do I gain with my attention? What story then do I want to be in that I create and the feeling and emotion I create instead of the feeling of a news story or a Facebook post? I get to choose to create my own dream if I'm not dreaming what is being offered by somebody else. And I get to choose whether I have my attention in the story I want to create and the feeling I want to create if I don't put it in somebody else, but I have to pull my attention out of there and put it here. And so what I want to create is greater control over my attention that then I use to create the emotions and narratives that I want to live in of what's possible. Getting on here and telling you these stories is one of them. I have more fulfillment out of that. Than scrolling Facebook. So as you look at what you're let going and letting go of, write down what is it you want to gain? You know, if it's just food, at a bare minimum, when you let go of sugar and, and alcohol and things like that, and eat a healthier diet of, of vegetables and fruits and whole grains and, and, and eliminate processed foods. What do you, you're feeding your body different food. That goes into your gut and different bacteria feed on it. You get healthier bacteria instead of unhealthy bacteria. You create a different biome in your gut and different biome in your gut creates a different interaction with your nervous system. And, a different, and you have a lot of nerve endings that finish in your gut that go to your brain. So because you eat different foods, healthier foods, you get different signals to your brain. It changes the impulses in your brain. It's a thing. You'll notice through some cycles there after you flush out some toxins and things start to change. Your head's clear. There's less fog. There's more focus. Okay. So what I want you to do as you prepare here on Fat Tuesday is enjoy something that you like and appreciate it and love it. And love the stories that, you know, oh, I'm going to miss it and that'll be terrible that your mind is having a reaction about. Right. You know, the thing, thing about uh, <laughs> the Semlas, like, then like there was a king here in Sweden, like in the 1700s, and he loved the Semla and he had a big dinner and then he had a bunch of Semlas after dinner. He died of something with his stomach that night after having way too many Semlas uh, and whatever else he had. So, you know, that's what happens if you don't control your attention and control the impulses. But anyways, that's a side note. A little bit of gluttony history. So write down what you're moving towards. What are you moving towards? Here's what you're moving away from. What are you moving towards? I'm giving up ice cream, but I got a backup plan. There's a great recipe that's easy to make, a bunch of frozen bananas and fresh fruit. Put it in a 
food processor, nice and creamy and tasty, like ice cream, but it's all just fruit. I want sweets. Piece of fruit tastes amazing, particularly after, you know, about a week when you've been eating clean, things taste different. You'll be so much more present with the flavors of things. A date. A date, a uh, sweet date. Oh, so good. Persimmon. A pear. Oh, it's as good as any dessert. It's so satisfying and flavorful. So am I losing things? Yeah, I'm gaining other things. I don't plan to suffer and, 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 and have a miserable appetite. Uh, create beautiful, healthy habits that are enjoyable, that are like, these are treats that you savor and are present with. So that's just in the food department. But what are you doing with your mind and your emotions? You know, in the big scheme of things, Fat Tuesday was very different 2,000 some years ago. Christ, Christ on that Tuesday, rumor has it, it's the day he was in the wilderness and he went and met John, with John the Baptist. And John the Baptist recognized him as having a special consciousness. And didn't even said, no, not even worthy to baptize you the blessing of a cleansing ritual. And Christ told him something to the effect, we're all worthy. And that idea cleansed John the Baptist's mind of the idea that he's not worthy. And in the ritual, that day, Christ decided in whatever the thought process, inspiration process, emotional process was, that he wanted to go further into the truth. Beyond just, are we just the impulses at the end of our nerve endings that react? Can we exercise choices? Can we seek to detach our attention from the stories in our head and from the fears we have? and explore the love we feel and the truth of, of what is everything sourced from. Stories are just manifestations out here at the leaves of the tree. What is at the trunk of the tree and what is at the roots that it's even drawing its life from? What are we drawing our life from? What is our creator? Perhaps his quest was something like that. Looking for the truth, not the stories. Looking for the truth. How do you find the truth? Distance and let go of the stories and the lies. And what will remain is the truth. Stop believing the lies. They'll dissolve, and what's left is the truth. So I want to realign my will. I want to realign my attention with my will and the truth. That's what my purification, cleansing ritual is about. Cleansing diet will just help focus my attention, clean up, make me more noticeable of the impulses that my body has. Go distract me from what I'm feeling. I go, no, I'm not going to go for a distraction. What am I feeling? Can I be present with it? Because if I can be present with it and practice being present with it, then maybe in my relationships, I have an impulse to avoid. Ah, I don't want to say this is going to be uncomfortable. Instead of avoiding something, I can tell the truth. I can solve a problem. Or something in my life that isn't working well, instead of distracting myself from it and avoiding it, 
I can be honest, go, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I need to change that. It'll help give me the presence and awareness to be with what is and change it. But ritual and honesty, that's how you get to the truth. And it's not always comfortable. I've got a message from somebody saying, yeah, he was really surprised as he looked up into the, the his mind and how many belief systems and agreements he's made over it. And he's like realized and that he's just been running an automatic. I said, yeah. But once you realize that, the truth of it, you have a chance to be free of it. But first, it's really going to surprise you. Shocking. And this is headway on it. So there will be impulses to deal with. I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, practice to be present. But so when you are dealing with that, what I want you to do for now is what is what is what you're going to remind yourself? This is why I'm doing this. This is what I'm going for. This is the greater control over my attention I want. This is the greater health I want for my body. This is the greater ability to be present with my emotions. This is my ability to separate from the stories of the mind that will be offered. Instead of being the the puppet that follows the impulses. Instead of being at this end of a string of impulses that we just react and do things automatically, you're going to pause and refrain. And take a moment to see that there's more to us. Being in conscious awareness and will to do something different than the automatic thing we've done. And if you can do it with about food, and you gain that gap between what your mind says, oh, I need my coffee, I have to have my chocolate, uh, I can't live without, oh, I really want that, I can't see giving that up. Having a gap between that narrative story and you gives you a chance to be free of those story needs, not real needs. And if you can make that break with what your mind says about food, then you can make that break and that gap. You build that confidence to say, I don't have to believe my mind and I don't have to believe its fears and I don't have to believe its desires and attachments. I can be fine when I don't do what it says. And that will give you confidence and faith in your own personal power to not believe it about emotional things in other areas of your life. So when you see that impulse, and you take time to pause, that's a win. That's progress. That right there is the win and progress, however many times you do it. Most of what the mind says isn't true. Most of your thoughts aren't true. And very few of them are necessary or helpful. And all this will get you less identified with all those narrative stories. So take a moment, take attention away from what you're giving up. And what are you doing this for? And decide, instead of living in the narrative story, oh, poor me, I'm not going to have send them for, four, for six weeks, and that's so terrible because they're so awesome. And what am I crazy, and this is stupid, and other people aren't doing this, and whiny victim stories. Instead of that, go. For six weeks, I'm getting stronger. 
For six weeks, I'm building my will. For six weeks, I'm acting, accessing this greater consciousness of ritual to build my awareness and detach from stories. And this will give me life skills to use to accelerate my change and use elsewhere in my life. I go up level, one or two levels in the game of mastery. That's what I'm doing. At least that's the story I'm going to practice. I'm getting stronger. Somebody else might tell the story, oh, poor me. I, I'm going to choose what I believe. I suggest you adopt a choice in what you're going to believe about this process and what you're moving towards. It'll help you detach from the victim stories that are being offered about what you're letting go of for a few weeks. Fat Tuesday, Glutton Tuesday. Or Purposeful Tuesday. What's your purpose in this? What's your purpose in this? I'll talk to you later about temptation. Construct the cleanse however you want to. Any amount you do, just thinking about it, just thinking about it and noticing that your mind has reactions and a tongue of war about it. You gain awareness of how much your mind reacts to an idea. That's a win. That awareness is a win. The next win is doing something about it. 